Let's pivot back to the Warriors in about 10 minutes. Let's go. Shoot, Shasky. Well, yesterday they DFA'd Joey Bart for a guy that most people have no idea who he is, and he's coming off of two Tommy Johns, and they brought him up. Uh, to pitch in a game. And I'm not triggered about what ended up happening yesterday, but I think that the Joey Bart microcosm, to me, is one of the more frustrating things as a fan, just in general. Like, you take somebody very high in the draft, you never really give that guy a long runway to succeed or fail. You don't trade him away and be bold if you knew all along you didn't want to keep him. And then you suppress his value to where he's worth nothing, and now you're trying to get him back on the Sacramento roster by having him clear waivers. I, I mean, they spent all the last season, and I'm not I'm not triggered by this. It's just it's frustrating. They spent all the last season because they claim Blake Sable, and they, and they they tried to play that guy you don't like at Blake catcher. Sable? Well, <laughs> I'm kidding. Blake I, Sable had more at bats last know, year than Joey Bart ever had in one season. It, it's kind of unfair, to and he wasn't good. Yeah. Blake Sable, by the metrics, StatCast does this, the worst defensive catcher in the last decade in baseball. Wow. Wow. Okay? So wow. you want to know why the pitching staff and the defense fell off? Well, a large part, the guy had six pass balls, 28 wild pitches, and was the worst framer in baseball, and also had the worst throwout rate, held on to the ball longer than anyone on a throwdown. Like, he wasn't good. Then they played him in left field. He was worse out there. And it's not like his bat made up for it. Really, Joey Bart's career averages, his OBP, you know, OPS, all the different ways that you measure it, they're very in line. Like, they're very close, Blake Sable and Joey Bart. Neither is a great player. But it's more frustrating than, like, I got more of Blake Sable to look at than Joey Bart over his career and you just give up on him? By the uh, way, it's just like frustrating. Like, why didn't you trade the, the guy away two years by ago? By the way, Blake Sable uh, is in AAA Sacramento. <laughs> I had no idea. He was and up I don't there mean to Sacramento. crush Blake Sable. It's uh, more like, like if you have a guy who's number your number two overall pick, and you kind of knew he wasn't the guy, and you drafted another catcher the very next year, why didn't you move that guy in a deal to get you something back of of value? So. I ask this question, and maybe it'll light up the lines here. 888 I have an interesting question. Who fumbled with their top three pick more? Was it the Warriors with James Wiseman? Was it the Niners with Trey Lance? Or was it the Giants with Joey Bart? <laughs> Who fumbled their pick more? I, think now I want people to marinate on that. 888-957-9570. We had just had top three picks in the Bay Area. Trey Lance, James Wiseman, Joey Bart. All three, no longer here. Wiseman, number two overall pick. Joey Bart, number two overall pick. Trey Lance, number three overall pick. Barely got to know him. Barely got to see him. You can make the argument for, so let's just start with the 49ers first, right? Because football's always king. You can make the argument that finding Brock Purdy completely eliminates the entire Trey Lance conversation, wipes it off the map. And I'm listening to that. For now. But there's another part of me that says, yeah, but you could have really used one of those first-round picks in the Super Bowl against Patrick Mahomes. Now, all right, look, to me, I think the Trey Lance pick was evaporated the second they found Brock Purdy, but I will listen to it was still a horrible trade. Oh, actually, I mean, yeah, they found Brock Purdy, but they brought back Jimmy Garoppolo as well. If Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't get hurt against the Dolphins, oh no, they lucked into we it. We don't, I, we don't see Brock. It Purdy. wasn't by grand, by right. grand design. Like they, they, in part, they lucked into it. But here's what I'll give them credit: they had the conviction to move off that guy, and they just had the greatest quarterback season a Niner quarterback right. has had, no doubt, twenty five years, no doubt. But we barely got to see Trey Lance, no doubt. Like we, he did you know, get hurt. A lot of a lot of people, a lot of people. When he, I bring up the Texas game, I know ad nauseum. But if you look at that stat line against the Houston Texans. If Jimmy Garoppolo produced that same stat line, we'd be like, man, Jimmy, all he does is win games. All he does is win games. That's what we would have said. I, I, so I, so I it you. felt like we barely even got to see Trey Lance, and the book is still still not written about him. But when you say that in terms of fumbling the bag, it means you totally botched everything, and the situation was made worse because of it, right? That's the yeah. way I'm viewing it. Oh, that's how you're viewing it? So okay. I would say right. the Niners are not I'm just, worse off because they found Purdy. The way, the way I'm viewing it is... It's just pretty simple. It's just who fumbled their pick? Who who oh, which, didn't get which their isolated pick was which, the worst? Yeah, I mean, basically, which team fumbled their top three draft pick? Instead of you know, because Joey Bart, we saw a lot more Joey Bart, and I still don't think he got a great chance I, to with, succeed. I'm with you. Um, every time it felt like he turned something around, 
He got pinned. He didn't have a rapport with the pitcher, with the pitching staff. Whatever that that wouldn't feel. That one feels like it was fumble more so. But this was Farhan. That wasn't a Farhan pick. That was a Bobby yeah. Evans pick. Yeah. So maybe Farhan just he didn't fit his style. We'll see about Joey Bart. Trey Lance. It's to me that's the biggest fumble. And they traded two picks. You can't trade picks. You can't trade time. picks. You can't trade picks like they did for Trey Lance and not and see three games and say yeah he's not good enough and then move him. Like three games, like three games in, you moved him for what a fourth or fifth round yeah. pick to Dallas. No, yeah, basically. So now James Wiseman, we get to James Wiseman. Well, this is where I think this is the biggest one, and the reason why I say that it's it's not just the selection. To me, it's what the selection represented in terms of the fountain of youth and where the organization was going as you're clinging to a dynasty and you're trying to, you know squeeze out the last embers of great years from the franchise's greatest player. So to to me, the Warrior pick is is sadly the worst one of them all because it was meant to extend the dynasty. Right. Whereas these other ones were like, hey, start your dynasty or revamp your organization or whatever. I, I maybe I'm reading it wrong. I, I see it as the Warrior one was the worst one. All right. Um and because of the financial fallout of yeah. trading him away for and having GP2, to get but some yeah, back. Like no, the, no, whole no. the whole thing was just kind was of a smoking. nightmare. And you could use, but now TJD has alleviated some of that, right? TJD has better hands than James Wiseman did as a member to go to State Warriors. And he's doing basically what they wanted James Wiseman to do. However, we saw flashes of brilliance from James Wiseman. Here's Anthony Slater a couple weeks ago okay. about the Warriors filling the with pick on James Wiseman. I think the the sting of the James Wiseman with pick you're feeling more now mm -hmm. because James Wiseman uh, this is this would have been what year four year, year three four, four. it is yep. I mean um, that's when he was supposed to matter and not only was he supposed to matter as as their starting center but a shooter right you remember yep. when he came in the league his rookie year he was hitting threes I can yep. remember one game against Minnesota he was hitting like pin down like yep. coming off screens like in Clay Thompson type of actions mm -hmm. and it was like oh man this is the perfect center to have next to Draymond. Because he can space the floor, but also rim protect, as you mentioned. Um, you know, and it's the modern way, right? How would Chet Holmgren, for example, who was also right. like Wiseman, a second overall pick, look? Uh, why did they look at Kelly Olynyk at the trade deadline? Why were they interested in him? I think they do want a center that can shoot next to Draymond. Uh, I think that's what Dario Sarge, you know, theoretically was supposed to be at times this season. That's what Jermichael Green uh, was supposed to be last season. Neither of those two free agent signings worked quite as good as Otto Porter did. Well, and w what if I also said to you, B, like, if I was breaking these down, does it matter? I'm asking you, does it matter who else was drafted around that player? Absolutely it matters. Okay, because like, when I, I look at the Joey Bart draft, when I look at the Joey Bart draft, Alec Bohm went right after to the Philadelphia Phillies. Really good player. I don't know if he's it's a not bad. I don't know if he's a franchise altering player for the Giants. Like he's a good player. I think he's a solid player. He looks a lot better in that stacked Philly lineup than he would in in the Giants lineup the last couple of years. Jonathan India has been a, a solid player. Nick Madrigal has been okay. And then you look a little lo farther down, Logan Gilbert. When I look at the NBA draft, I, I say, wow, Halliburton went again ten picks later, he but he 12. went later. And Anthony Edwards went ahead of him. You can't control that. But you did have LaMelo Ball go right after him. Like, does that one... And then I look at the football one. You could have had Micah Parsons. But that was like 10 picks later. So I kind of view that similar to the Halliburton. Really nobody was pounding the table for that player. And all the other quarterbacks busted out. Meaning weren't good. Like, I'm still not even sure if, if Trevor Lawrence is good. So I look at the Wiseman one and I feel like there are some... Solid players that they not, that the Warriors could have taken, though nobody wanted them at the time, and I guess that that kind of weighs me back to the Warrior being the biggest mistake. Now, Anthony mentioned how Wiseman was getting better his rookie year as a 19 year old who played three college games. Now, Lamelo Ball is interesting, right? Lamelo Ball, everybody's Lamelo Ball, but I just don't know how it works in the I, system. I, I don't know how it works with Stephen Curry, and then you look at the last two seasons. Hurt. LaMelo Ball's played 36 games and exactly. 22 games, right? He's played 58 games over the last two NBA seasons. 58 games. Now, the numbers are impressive. There's no doubt. His numbers, he's a 24-point-per-game score, shooting 35% from three, 36% from three, uh, lifetime 37% shooter from three. LaMelo's good, but can he stay on the floor? Lonzo Ball has not been able to stay on the floor. Uh -huh. There's something up with the Ball brothers. Maybe it's all the AAU games they played. Maybe all the wear and tear on their leg. I have no idea. 
but LaMelo Ball has played 58 games over the course of the last two seasons. All right? He's played a lot of basketball. Now, James Wiseman, that rookie year, he got hurt, right, with the knee. He was inactive, got hurt with the knee. It felt like he was starting to figure things out slowly, but surely now he's had all kinds of setbacks. Now he's in Detroit. He's lost. I mean, Detroit's a joke. Like, their coaching staff, everything up there in Detroit. I know Kay Cunningham can't wait to get out of there. I know he's dying to get up out of there. So Wiseman, that was a tough pick, but I understand how you can whiff on a pick like that with the COVID protocols. And maybe the COVID protocols is what hurt the Niners with Trey Lance because Trey Lance didn't play that season. You played the one game against what? Central Arkansas in the mm, scrimmage? It was a, like a simulated game. Right, it was a simulated game. It. Yeah, whatever they So the it. pandemic really destroyed what you maybe could have evaluated with James Wiseman with him only playing three games at Memphis and then working out and, you, you know, you got to do the whole social distancing or whatnot. I think COVID really hurt those two picks. Now, I'm not saying that's the end-all, be-all, but the COVID protocols not being able to scout the way you wanted yeah. to scout or Trey Lance not being able to play Real life football games that season in 2019. What if he does play that season and you're like, I'll oh, trace a third round pick, not a number two overall pick or a number three overall pick? When did the hype start building and building and building and building and building? So I don't think we saw enough for Trey Lance. Wiseman, I, I think maybe Joey Bart was the biggest whip because you just held on to him for so damn long. And it's like you went through catcher after catcher after catcher after catcher. The alternatives weren't great. <laughs> like that's you know like that that's the thing I I, I bring up Blake Sable Blake Sable is I don't I still it just doesn't make sense to me like and I don't you had no attachment to Blake Sable whatsoever you swooped him up you played him at first base you played him in left field you played him at catcher he had three hundred and ten at bats right. that's more than the four full seasons that he was I mean he was up and down four mm -hmm. full seasons of at bats for Joey Bart you saw more in one year. From Blake Sable, just in terms of at bats, and the numbers were almost identical. I mean, Blake yep. Sable was slightly better on offense. I think Joey Bart is better on defense overall. Yeah. It it's honestly a head scratcher on a team that I thought was rebuilding. We all thought was rebuilding, right? And they were fooling themselves like we're competing, we're competing. You're not now. The Giants would tell you, Bonte, in, to the same way like that. Brock Purdy. Oh, we found Brock Purdy, and it negated the Lance pick, and we found TJD, so it kind of negated the Wiseman pick. We found Patrick Bailey. That negated the 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 Joey Bart pick. I'm still jury out on on you know Patrick Bailey. I don't think he's done enough to prove to me that he's the you know next five year catcher. But early returns are he's been better than Joey Bart. Yeah, no doubt, a lot better. No doubt. So Joey Bart to me, I mean, you could eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. It is fascinating that the top three picks from when was Joey Bart drafted? 18, 2018. So you had Trey Lance in twenty twenty basically. After the pandemic season, the James Wiseman, they all came basically together, all around the same time. All around the same and time. COVID could you could also point to COVID for Joey Bart. There was no minor leagues. That's true. That's a good. There point. was no minor leagues, and remember, Buster sat the year yep. out, yep. and they they like haphazardly added him to the team toward the end. Which to me, he should have played the whole year at the big no league level. If there's no development, develop. Look, let him struggle. Let him go out there. You had nothing to lose. Uh, I don't know why they were trying to. This goes back to the there they find nobility in being five hundred, and mm -hmm. I didn't. Which team fumbled their top three draft pick the most? Was it the Warriors and James Wiseman? Was it the Niners and Trey Lance? Was it the Giants and Joey Bart? Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. Uh, so far, the vote is the votes are going as a court as votes right now. Forty six percent Warriors and James Wiseman. Forty six percent. Niners to Trey Lance, just 7% for the Giants and Joey Bart. So when you think about Joey Bart, I just look at the lineup, right, with the Giants lineup and what they trotted out over the last few years. And it was not entertaining. We talked that nauseam about it. It was not sexy. As you mentioned, Blake Sable. Uh, 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 who, they had somebody else as well. Blake Sable, who else was playing? They had, they had the, uh, who, who's the other Trump, guy they had? Chadwick Trump. Chadwick Trump is who I'm thinking <laughs> it was about. not good. Chadwick Trump. So, it was not so, good. So you, like... Out of all the teams <laughs> that could have really just said, you That's know what, what? I'm we're not going anywhere, play Joey Bart, the Giants did fumble that. And then you DFA him for a pitcher yesterday who goes two innings and gives up nine runs. Poor Dalton Jeffries probably won't start again this season. Well, maybe he will. Who knows? But Joey Bart just never got that shake. Now, James Wiseman, he's playing in Detroit. I still think there's something there. Is he going to be an all-star, an MVP type player? I have no idea. It doesn't look like no. it. Doesn't look like it. But I can see why the Warriors took a chance on the big. Now, mind you, the Warriors did win the championship the year James Wiseman was out. Wiseman was out, so it didn't kill them 
in the short term. Long term now, when you look at some of the spacing and what they could use, yeah, maybe it's hurting them today more so than two years ago. But the Warriors didn't win a championship. They didn't win a championship with James Wiseman being hurt, coming off a knee injury. So that's a big thing. And as you mentioned, Brock Purdy, they got the 49ers looked at the Brock Purdy. So the Trey Lance hasn't destroyed you. Usually a pick like that, when you trade up in the first round and you take Trey Lance number three overall, that's the type of pick that could destroy a franchise. Like, look at Jess had to pivot to Aaron Rodgers in a heartbeat. The Bears just traded Justin Fields. Matt Jones is on a different team. Four of those players in that draft, the four, four of the top five quarterbacks selected, are going to be a new teams next season. It's kind of fascinating. And and I don't know about Trevor Lawrence. Like, we'll see. Like, we, we will see with him. Uh, getting back to Joey Barr, it's just, it to me, that team, more than any other, you were, like, you were faking it. You were not a competitive team. You were not some team that was going to win the division. I know 2021 happened. Buster retired. So they, they tried to give Joey Bart some opportunities the very next year. And and look, he, had, he did get injured. They they wasted 270 at-bats on Austin wins and Kirk Casale. Mm-hmm. Kirk Casale and Austin wins. Like, at least the Niners and the Warriors. They did have Kirk Casale I know. Austin at least the Niners oh and the Warriors. You could play Joey Bart. That, I, that's, that's the part that, that's like. Why, that's why I have the Giants fumbling Joey Bart as the biggest miss. Well, and, and That's it, to me, that's the biggest fumble right now. Look at Kirk Casale. Where's Kirk Casale at right now? I don't, even, I don't even know. Look, man, where's Kirk Casale at? Kirk Casale, Chadwick Trump, Austin Wynn. Where are these guys at? Kirk Casale's in Cincinnati. Okay. He's 34. Mm. Chadwick Trump. Where's Chadwick <laughs> Trump at? I have no I idea. I believe he is with the Braves right now. Is he really? Not playing? Uh, let's see if he's on the active roster right now. Give me a second. But I, I can make the argument for both the Niners and the Warriors. Like, you had generational players on your team, right? So when the rookie isn't ready to go and you have gener- generational players, think of the Niners roster. There are like four guys that will be all-time Niners, right? Look at the Warriors. Steph, Clay, Dre, all-time Warriors, right? So, hey, the rookie's not ready to go. Like, I- I'll listen to that argument. Chadwick Trump, Kirk Casale. Austin wins. Are really? Yeah, that's the biggest fumble to me. Oh, and, and and a year when like let's call it what it is. Like you got lucky in twenty twenty one. Nobody thought you were going to replicate it in twenty twenty two or twenty twenty three. Give the guy the runway. Now he did get hurt, so that's that that's an element of this. But I remember very specifically, he rips two doubles. Okay, and then lines out in his third at bat. Fourth at bat's coming up, and they're going to pinch hit Kirk Sally for him. Yeah, in in a game against the Diamondbacks in August. And he's 23 years old. And I'm thinking to myself, what are we doing, Kapler? Yeah. Like, what? what you, you, you're, is it all on Kapler? Is it on Farhan? That's on I the mean, whole thing. Look know. at their development in general. Their development in general is not good. Like the kid Miller that we saw over the weekend, the lefty, he's their 30th ranked prospect. I'm like, no, he's a lot better than that. Yeah, Who's I, doing the rankings well, here? Well, I, that's why I, we always have this discussion about farm system rankings or whatnot. I don't, I don't buy into 